Welcome, 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 and welcome again. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and shipping is the fundamental foundation of e-commerce. That is how a customer gets the item that they want to purchase. But lots of mistakes can be made in shipping. And if you're an e-commerce seller, maybe you're making some of those mistakes. Let's talk about how to avoid them. Let's go. So for many years, I avoided e-commerce altogether because my thought was shipping is too difficult, too confusing, getting packages lost, what address to put on there, how much should I charge for this, I, I just all was too much. Now make fun of me all you want, I had a legitimate fear, sorry. But leave it to my wife to do the things that I'm always afraid to do, like killing spiders. And she went and figured it out herself, started her own eBay business, and then later taught me. Now I have much more confidence in what I'm doing. But if you are new to the game, or if you feel like you are making mistakes with shipping, we're gonna talk about some of the mistakes and how you can avoid them. So all of the e-commerce platforms have different processes for shipping. eBay, you go and purchase the uh, shipping label and you put it on your item. Poshmark, they give you the shipping label and they handle it and it's a lot of stuff out of your hands. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do it. So we're going to be focusing mostly on the broader aspects of shipping and the mistakes that can be avoided there. So the first mistake I see lots of e-commerce sellers make is not purchasing shipping from the website. Uh, eBay allows you to purchase uh, shipping through their website which gives you really good discounts. And if you go into the post office to ship your item, you're going to pay what's called retail price. And that's going to be significantly more than what eBay can uh, sell you shipping for. And if you do it that way, you're liable to spend more money on shipping than is necessary. You may be charging the customer that, but that means you're charging them more, which means they're less likely to buy from you. Now, whether or not your e-commerce platform allows you to purchase postage through their website at a bulk rate or not, there are third-party companies like Pirate Ship that allow you to use their bulk discount so that you can get the cheapest shipping possible. Now, on the topic of cheap shipping, you always must remember that if you're not gonna offer free shipping and you're gonna pass the cost of shipping on to the customer, make sure you're charging the correct amount. Now, if you charge $5 to ship an item, but it turns out they're going to the, you know, Nome, Alaska, and it costs $15 to ship it there, you're gonna be stuck with that bill. And especially with people early on in their business, they might be buying cheaper products and not getting as much margin out of them, you might find that you're losing money if you're not charging the correct shipping. Now, in order for you to charge the correct amount of shipping for an item, you need to know its weight and its size. An item that's eight ounces is gonna cost a lot less than an item that is five pounds. Uh, I use this little scale that I weigh all my packages on and I can get a very accurate, quick measurement. And in most cases, if it's under a pound, it can go first class and the size of the item is not necessarily important. With priority though, you must enter a measurement and any item over a pound will have to go priority. And that can get very expensive very quickly, especially if the item is oversized, they use a whole different scale at a certain uh, size and you could be stuck with a lot of expense on shipping. Now with my business, I sell a lot of the same types of items over and over. So I get pretty familiar with what things weigh and the cost differences between the two. If I'm selling a t-shirt, it's gonna be between eight ounces and 10 ounces. If I'm selling a jacket, two to four pounds, uh, shoes, two to three pounds, et cetera, et cetera. Now, because I sell all the same items, I can tailor my shipping supplies to the items that I'm selling. If I'm selling a pair of jeans, I'll use a padded flat rate envelope. It costs me about $7.55, and I can charge about $8.40 for the shipping costs. And this will fit all, just about every size of jeans. If it's a really, really crazy, unusual size, then maybe I have to go to a box. But this will do almost everything for a flat rate. If I'm selling an item that's two pounds that won't fit in here, but it sells to go to Alaska, that could end up being 20 something dollars. 
So the pad flat rate makes a big difference. Now if I'm selling a t-shirt, I've got these little poly mailers that fit just about every t-shirt I've ever owned. I don't think I've found a t-shirt yet that doesn't fit perfectly in here. And it's lightweight, doesn't add a lot of weight, and it ends up shipping between three and five dollars. But it also makes a big difference knowing what you're selling because if you're selling books or any other type of media that you might get at a library, the media rate for the USPS is actually significantly lower than it is for every other type of item. And that has to do with the library system and how the USPS treats uh, library exchanges. And you can kind of get in the middle of all that and get really inexpensive shipping for media items. Now, speaking of shipping supplies, one of the most important things you can have as far as shipping supplies is a printer. Now, you can get a normal jet ink printer and that will cost you lots of money. And it's a little bit more flexible when it comes to international sales because you have to include a customs form which prints a lot easier on one of those but since I don't do a lot of that and I ship through the eBay global shipping program uh, I just have a thermal printer and this saves me a ton of money and a ton of time this is my Rolo thermal printer I get these little shipping stickers and the heat transfer onto the stickers gives me my postage. Now, the great thing about it is I just peel that thing off, slap it on the package, and it's ready to go out the door. I don't have to tape it or anything like that. And ultimately saves me a lot of money on ink uh, and excess paper that I'm not wasting. And it makes a huge difference on time. Now, a thermal printer may not be necessary for your application if you're just doing it on the side, but if you're gonna start handling larger volumes, I almost require it in my case. Now it's all fine and good if you've got your supplies right, you know what you're charging, you've got the printer to print it out all nice for you. But if you don't have the right item, you're going to make a mistake and a very costly mistake. In fact, you might send the wrong item to the wrong person and send the other item to the wrong person and you now have two items that went in different directions and in order to satisfy both customers you're either going to refund them both and you're probably not getting your item back because they're not going to ship it back because it would cost them money and so you have to pay for their shipping to bring it back and at that point you might just say screw it i don't want it keep it enjoy it if you can maybe it's not relevant to them and you are out of money big time that is a huge mistake and it has happened to me multiple times and this is why when I ship, I am extremely meticulous about confirming that this item that I have is the item that's going to this address. So I will look at the item, double check the listing, look at the address, double check, doo -doo 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 -doo, triple check over and over until I am 100% confident in my soul that that item is going to the correct place. Now this leads us to the topic of organization of your inventory. And this is a tricky one because there's all sorts of different methods and ways that you can organize your inventory. You can't ship something that you cannot find. So organization is fairly important. Now for us, we put most of our clothing on hangers and that's because we sell lots of vintage items that are unique. It would be pretty hard to be like, okay, uh, I'm gonna put all of the t-shirts here uh, in these four boxes, um, fold it up real nice and neat and then have to dig through them to find them. It would also be very annoying that if every item had a particular number and then I had to go find that item and number and still have to do the same amount of digging. And then I'd have to still double check the item itself because I need to make sure that the item that's in the bag is actually the item that's being shipped. So ultimately we just chose to hang clothes because we can look through them fairly quickly then we can confirm that they are the item that the person wants to buy and we can ship it to them. But for your case, it might be different. You might have uh, books that are a lot easier to look through or something like that and it's easier just to label them. Whatever ends up be working best for you, that's great. But you do need to understand that organization is necessary. If you just pile everything up in your room or put it all in a bag or just dump it all in a box, you may be prone more often to losing an item. And if you lose an item, you have to then sort of, you know, give their people their money back and you look bad and they don't get the item, they might leave you a negative review on whatever platform you're on and nobody has a good time. Now, when it comes to organization, you need to start with what you have. What kind of items are you selling? If you're selling books, uh, it might be simple enough to put them all on a bookshelf because all these books have really easy identifiers, they have titles, etc., etc., that might make it very easy for you. But if you're selling items that have multiple quantities of the same item, maybe in different sizes, that can be a little trickier because you might have a 
button up shirt, let's say a Robert Graham button up shirt, and you have uh, four different sizes. Uh, if you put them all on a rack, it might be kind of hard to distinguish which one is which. Uh, so in that case, you may have to think about a different scenario. Ultimately, with organization, you'll figure it out based on your brain, how it works, the items that you're using, and how often you're selling things. Now, ultimately, the method that I have found that works the best is you just maintain. Whatever it is that you have, whatever system it is, you spend the time, keep it in that organization, keep maintaining that system and do it. You can refine it however you want, but if you start a system and you're not consistent with it, you're gonna lose things. Now one of the final issues we're gonna talk about is packing an item. Yes, this is probably the most important in a lot of ways, especially if you're selling items that are fragile. I sell lots of clothes, it's hard to break clothing in the mail, but it's not hard to break ceramics, it's not hard to break electronics. And I have lost plenty of money with items that have been broken. And that means first and foremost, if you're going to ship an item that is particularly fragile and it is particularly valuable, always get insurance. I'll tell you right now, it will always be in your benefit to get insurance. And if you need to, just add that insurance cost onto the front of the shipping cost. Now, if you are shipping things that are fragile, like electronics or ceramics, uh, you may consider double boxing. That means you put the uh, item in a box, put all the materials to keep it from shifting around, then put it in another box. Uh, lots of buyers enjoy this and like this a lot because it does give them that added uh, safety of their item and it saves you a lot of time and doesn't really change the cost of shipping all that much. Now it's important when it comes to shipping that you do not let your item shift around in the box, particularly if it's a fragile item. Even if it's not a fragile item, let's say a pair of shoes, they're not going to break in the sense that you know they'll get a crack developed in them, but if they're sliding around in there, they could wear against each other and cause rubs and leave you with an item that is not what you photograph. So make sure that you get bubble wrap, uh, newspaper, whatever it might be, to fill in the gaps and not allow your items to shift around inside the box. Now if you're shipping something like sports cards, it may be uh, advantageous to put two pieces of cardboard to keep that item from bending, you want to make sure that your items are safe and secure in the package. And I'll tell you right now, as a buyer and a seller, you will never offend a single buyer if you overpack and over secure the item that you're selling. Over time, as you learn and practice, you'll learn what is really necessary and what is really unnecessary so that you can save yourself some time and money. I always appreciate when I get feedback that says packaged well, because I know that my buyer is thankful uh, and confident in the way that I ship items. You've probably experienced it yourself, an item that gets in the mail and it gets destroyed and gets to you and you are bummed. And if you're selling like more unique items, it could be very, very hard to find those items otherwise. So always overpack until you've really developed the, the skill and the confidence that you can pack in a way that may be more frugal. All right, that's all the shipping advice today. Uh, we will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions about shipping, put them in the comments below. We'd love to help answer them. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we post, and we will see you guys on the next video. Peace.